Hey what's up everyone, Oli here. So I've been using the M1 iPad Pro for a few days now. Wanted to give you my review, share my thoughts and share things that are quite interesting about it. Let's get into it. So the unboxing experience is pretty standard. You get the iPad, USB-C charging cable and the charging brick. Just very standard unboxing experience. To be honest, it hasn't really changed with the iPad Pro. I have the 12.9 inch space gray model here and this has 128 gigabytes of storage. One thing to note here is that the amount of RAM you have in the device changes depending on the storage option that you choose. So you get eight gigabytes of RAM with the 128, 256 and 512 gigabyte storage iPads, but you get 16 gigabytes of RAM with the one terabyte and two terabyte options. The M1 chip in them remains the same. You get the same eight core CPU and eight core GPU. It was pretty interesting when they unveiled it in their spring event having Tim Cook just come out of nowhere, like the faceless man out of Game of Thrones or something, and then put an M1 chip in the iPad. I don't think a lot of people are expecting that. And it's something that has really sort of ruffled some feathers, you could say, when it comes to the iPad and what it can do. The design itself is pretty much exactly the same as last year's. From the outside, you won't actually be able to tell any difference. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think the form factor, the design, the overall look of the iPad, it just looks amazing, it looks fantastic. I don't really know what else you can do with the device. It still amazes me that there's so much power and such a great screen in what is such a thin form factor. It's, it's pretty astonishing. I really do like the design of the iPad Pro. This is one of those designs that has pretty much been perfected. You could say that they could make the bezel smaller, but I think it's good that it actually has bezels because it makes it easier to hold without your fingers or your thumbs blocking the screen whilst you're using it. So. Yeah, I actually think it's a good idea that it still has bezels. One of the most notable changes with the 2021 iPad Pro is the screen on the 12.9 inch version. Apple have updated the screen and are calling it the Liquid Retina XDR display. Bit of a mouthful, but essentially it's their larger 32 inch Pro display XDR in an iPad sort of form factor. One thing to note though, is that you can only get this on the 12.9 inch model. The 11 inch model doesn't come with the same display. The display is now a mini LED display, which means there are a lot more LEDs in the display itself. The old iPad Pro only had 72 LEDs lighting up the screen. This new 12.9 inch model has over 10,000. What that should give you is much better contrast ratios. The blacks should be much blacker and the whites should be really bright especially because it has a peak brightness of 1600 nits. And it works. When watching movies, TV shows, other HDR content, you can really tell that there's a lot more sort of dynamic range in the content and it just makes quite a bit of difference. But there is one issue that a lot of people have been bringing up, especially on Twitter, is that there is noticeable blooming with this display. This is when you have a completely black background with something white on the screen. You can see clear portions of the screen being lit around the white parts. A tweet by Parker illustrates this very well. You can see that there is noticeable blooming around the white lines on the 2021 iPad, but on the 2018 iPad, it's not as noticeable, mainly because the 2018 iPad has far fewer LEDs, so it lights up more of the display getting rid of that blooming but then at the same time you don't get those really deep blacks as well. So even with the screen being mini LED it's still not going to be as good as a true OLED panel. If you've ever seen an OLED TV compared to an LED TV, a standard LED TV, there's noticeable difference. You can definitely tell there's a difference but I feel like Apple are trying to get a good in-between because OLED panels do have their own issues. Usually they don't get as bright, they usually have burning maybe after a few years of usage. So they're trying to get a good mix between having a lot of LEDs and having a bright display, but then not going to sort of full OLED as well. The biggest change for this iPad Pro is that it now has the M1 chip. I won't go through the benchmarks as it's the same chip that you'll find in the M1 MacBook, M1 Mac mini and the new iMac as well. Everybody already knows what it's capable of. Everybody already knows how powerful it is. From day to day use though, I haven't really noticed any performance difference. The older chips were already so good that most people probably didn't find their old iPad Pro slow anyway. The only place that I could see the M1 chip really coming into its own is when you're doing full on sort of video editing or audio editing or something like that. But when I'm editing photos in Lightroom and stuff, which is what I use my iPad for a lot, editing photos in Lightroom and just browsing the web and stuff, editing photos in Lightroom, the, the performance pretty much feels exactly the same. I haven't noticed anything too different between this 
and my older 2018 11 inch iPad Pro. One other benefit of the M1 chip is that the USB-C port now has Thunderbolt capability, which means that you can get super fast data transfer speeds. That also means technically, you should be able to run a 6K resolution display. I've connected up to my LG 5K display, but it just mirrors the display. It doesn't actually do anything, it doesn't actually use it as an external display. But I have a feeling maybe in the future, in a future update, that it may support external displays and you may be able to use sort of a two display setup. It'd be interesting to see what Apple do because the M1 chip, I feel like, really isn't being utilized here. So who is this for? What's the point of having all this power, an M1 chip, all of this RAM, all that sort of stuff, when it's held back by iPad OS? iPad OS is still so far away from a full sort of desktop experience. I know it's sort of trying to get in between of a mobile experience and a desktop experience, but I just feel like iPad OS is still lagging quite far behind. We know how powerful the M1 chip already is. I've been using it myself every day since its release. I use it on my MacBook Pro. I use it to edit photos, design websites and apps in Sketch and Figma. I also use it to edit 4K videos like this one that go onto YouTube. But the benefit of Mac OS is that I have a fully fledged desktop OS. I can have multiple windows open. I can have multiple things going on at the same time. iPad OS, I mean, technically you can only have three apps open at any one time. But that's it. And because it's such a small screen as well, it doesn't really make sense to have that many apps open. I feel like iPadOS is mainly designed to be a sort of one app experience at any one time. I'm not really sure what Apple are going to do here because if you put macOS on an iPad, you have a Mac pad instead of an iPad, a touchscreen Mac. But the macOS hasn't really been designed to be touch friendly. I know in the previous update, it's a lot more touch friendly than it used to be, but it's still not absolutely ideal for using your finger on, for using it in a sort of tablet sort of mode. I have a feeling in the next WWDC, we're going to see a big update to iPadOS. I think Apple have a lot planned for what iPadOS can do and utilizing the M1 chip, utilizing all this power in such a small form factor. it will be really interesting to see what they do, but right now, would I recommend it? It really depends. If you have a 2018 iPad Pro or newer, I don't think it's worth the upgrade yet. I don't think you're going to see enough sort of performance benefits unless you're doing very heavy video editing or music creation or something like that on the iPad. I just don't think it makes any sort of sense. I feel like the 2021 12.9 inch iPad, the one I have here, is targeted at a very small subset of users that are going to utilize this sort of power in an iPad, but most other people just not gonna benefit from it. I personally will be sticking with my 11 inch 2018 iPad Pro. That one I have no issues with. The power for me is completely fine. I also just think, you know, this is a thousand dollars for this model. For a thousand dollars, you can get a MacBook Air with the same chip, but then you have a keyboard and a display and everything, and you have Mac OS, which you can sort of do more on. So if I had to choose between the two, the iPad Pro or a MacBook, I would choose the MacBook. I just feel like it makes a lot more sense. But hey, if you can afford both, why not? I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.